don't buy this jacket. Their words, not mine. On Black Friday, 2011, Patagonia ran a full page ad in the New York Times with a strong call to action. Don't buy their stuff. Through this unabashed anti-consumerist sentiment, the advertisement revealed a recent trend within the outdoor apparel industry of cultivating a more environmentally friendly and morally grounded image. A trend which Patagonia, an apparel company born in the mountains in the 1970s, seems to be spearheading. However, the environmentalist messages of Patagonia and its outdoor apparel kin reveal a paradox intrinsic to ecologically conscious corporations. More product sales means more growth for the company, but increasing sales also means an increase in physical waste and emissions from creating, packaging, and shipping products. Essentially, the outdoor industry's success means a decline in the very nature that its customers seek to experience and that companies claim to protect. I want to dig into this paradox with Patagonia as an example. By positioning itself as anti-consumerist and pro-environment, Patagonia managed to increase its revenue by 40% just two years after running that ad. So let's go back to Patagonia's Don't Buy This Jacket ad to understand exactly how the company crafts its eco-conscious message. The full page ad is simple yet effective in delineating Patagonia's core principles, along with the bold Don't Buy This Jacket text that separates the ad from other pleas for consumption. The paragraphs below provide a real argument for forgoing the purchase of outdoor gear. Patagonia claims the R2 jacket's journey from its origin as 60% recycled polyester to their Reno warehouse generated nearly 20 pounds of carbon dioxide, 24 times the weight of its finished product. The ad then goes on to say that the jacket comes with an environmental cost higher than its price, as well as don't buy what you don't need, think twice before you buy anything. More recently, Patagonia rolled out its war and wear campaign. Centered around embracing old, repaired clothes, Patagonia frames ripped up jackets as apparel with stories. The campaign is multifaceted. A war and wear biodiesel truck tours the country repairing Patagonia enthusiasts' clothes, while videos reveal funny and emotional stories about 25-year-old board shorts that have been sewn and re-sewn countless times. Patagonia boasts the largest apparel repair facility in North America with 45 employees, and the company's CEO argues that repairing clothes is a radical environmental act. Throughout the marketing campaign and the company's culture as a whole, Patagonia seems to be committed to the durable and the long-lasting, encouraging its customers to forgo purchases and embrace the old. In its mission statement, ads, and war and wear campaign, Patagonia firmly positions itself as anti-consumerist and pro-environment. However, as many customers have pointed out online, there's a certain hypocrisy buried in this style of branding. Its marketing campaigns certainly don't make the company an environmental savior. It still capitalizes on the worn in aesthetic with $29 Wes Anderson-esque repair kits and brings in $600 million in revenue annually. Patagonia brands itself as anti-consumerist with ads, yet as a for-profit company, its very existence is reliant on consumption. Despite this contradiction that belies the company, at its core, Patagonia still runs an environmentally progressive business, a model that other outdoor apparel companies can and should learn from, but also one that customers should understand. Anti-consumerist ads and pro-environment campaigns from for-profit companies can sometimes err on the side of greenwashing. So it's important that customers understand both the advantages and limitations of this kind of corporate activism. While Patagonia's efforts to use recycled materials in their clothing is admirable and necessary, it doesn't mean that you should go ahead and buy 10 R2 jackets you'll probably never use. How then do we navigate an industry where the very jacket we buy is harming the environments we want to use it for? There is no silver bullet solution. It involves both thoughtful choices on the company's side as well as the consumers. Patagonia has positioned itself in the right direction in terms of environmental ethics, donating 100% of its $10 million revenue from Black Friday in 2016 to grassroots charities, or by simply accepting and repairing decades-old gear. The onus also falls on us, the consumers. 
but right now as people who still need shoes to climb rocks or packs to camp under the stars. We should keep in mind that clothes and gear have a life before and after we buy them. So buy slow, buy smart, or sometimes just don't buy at all. <laughs>